Most of us have been hearing of Apostle Tarkim and his zeal in contending for the faith that was once delivered to us by our Bible fathers. He has been setting in order the things that are lacking in church, exposing falsehood taken to be truth, and exposing wolves in sheep clothing masquerading as servants of God. But who is this man of God? To answer this question, let's travel back some years ago when Apostle Kimani and his group went around in prayer caravans pouring oil in cities to cleanse the nation of Kenya. Apostle Tarkim stood his ground and said that you don't cleanse a nation by pouring oil in cities, but by preaching the word of righteousness to the citizens of that nation. We have an, a bottle of anointing oil for every county, and we are going to pour this anointing oil. We don't carry oil to 47 counties of Kenya and pour to chase demons out. That is not the principle Jesus gave us. He said, disciple the nations teach them to observe the things i have taught you and the demons will leave them alone you don't sanctify cities by pouring oil you sanctify cities by raising a people that will carry god on the face of the earth say here of course that was not well received by the group that said that god told them to pour oil in all the major cities in the 47 counties in kenya Apostle Tarkim later invited Apostle Kamani for an apostolic chat in one of the major television networks in Kenya to discuss matters of doctrine. If I speak in the name of the Lord, I am to speak as an oracle of God. What's an oracle? Not the one, not the witch's oracle you're having in Kenya. When you speak in the place of God, you demonstrate his attributes. So I am challenging. I will pay any media house. I will pay two hours. It could be Citizen TV, NTV, KTN. I will pay for it. We'll sit there so that the whole Kenyans will watch us as we examine scriptures. I am challenging you for an apostolic chat on earth. Not in a closet so that people will not see. We will stand in the whole world. Let them watch us. And I will confront whatever you are doing. And you confront whatever I am doing, then we bring the Bible and check. As expected, Apostle Kamani did not want to take that route perhaps because he did not have a biblical example of an apostle who poured olive oil in cities claiming to cleanse the nations. Instead, he invited one of his Nigerian friends in a conference dabbed Standing Strong Ministers. They also organized the questions to ask and who to ask the question. In this case, one question from the moderator of the discussion and another from the wife of one of the pastors in the panel. Having known the background surrounding this conference, let's hear the question from the moderator and the biblical answer to it. How does a junior who has received a word from God, let's put it a rebuke, how does that junior communicate to his senior the word that he has received from the Lord? Behold, listen, oh, first Samuel 3 11. Let God be the just generation. Listen to me, oh. Huh. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do something in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will, will tingle. Let me ask you a question. The content of what we have read, does he have respect for Eli? No. Why? Eli should not expect respect from God. So, when Samuel would not be speaking to him, though he was younger in age, there should be no respect in the content of the message of God to Eli. Because God is no respecter for persons. So, if you are demanding respect when God is asking you for repentance, you are just very stupid. If you are talking about respect, when God is talking about repentance, you are very stupid. When God is confronting lawlessness, you, you are asking, you are looking for respect. You are d dumb, you are blind, you are doomed for destruction. And as coached or told behind the scenes, the wife of one of the pastors in the panel stood to ask a question to the guest speaker who had been invited because of Apostle Tarkim. And here is her question. The question is for, um, I don't know, um, it's called Apostle. Hear me. We have a Nigerian young man around. 
and he is really talking and harassing our fathers. My question to you is, I know you are from Nigeria. Is it in the order or manner of Nigerian young men to rebuke their fathers? I think that's um, a matter on my heart and I think uh, you, you need to help us. Respect is built into the culture of Yorubas. So when you see an elder, you'll actually, if you're a male, you'll actually, they call it dobale to them. So respect is very, very highly um, 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 entrenched in Yoruba society. So you won't, I don't know what, what tribe is he from? When Saul saw David going out against the Philistine, he said to Abner, the captain of the army, Abner, whose son is this young man? And Abner answered, By your life, O king, I do not know. The king said, Ask whose son the young man is. At this point, the invited guest behaved like Saul, and he wanted to know the natural identity of Apostle Tarkim. However, everyone in the room answered like Abner. We don't know. But here are seven things you should know about Apostle Tarkim. He who don't understand should give me their ear today. Number one. I don't belong to the perverted church. I belong to the church of Jesus Christ. Whenever I speak, the perverted church will get angry. The perverted church will attack me. The perverted church will say nonsense about me. I don't care. Two, I don't belong to adulterated grace. I belong to the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The grace that teaches us to deny ungodliness. Are you understanding me? That teaches us to live soberly and looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearance of Jesus Christ. Three, I don't belong to charlatans and money making pastors and thieves on the pulpit who call themselves spiritual fathers, rapers and adulterers. I don't belong to that. I am a priest with a creed. We belong to the seed of Levites. The blood of Jesus has watched us and we carry the DNA to bring order back to the life of believers. Listen carefully. The next number four. I don't belong to the kind of spirit in the church in Kenya. I belong to the spirit of Jesus Christ that was poured on the day of Pentecost. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. That is the spirit I belong to. It's a spirit that does not use oil. It's a spirit you don't put in the oil. You don't put in a bottle. It is not a symbol. It's a reality. The power of the Holy Ghost that born within your vein. That is where I belong to. Listen carefully. Five. I don't belong to the doctrines of demons. I don't belong to madmen doctrines. I'm not the stock of redemption of firstborn. I'm not the stock of raising of altars. I'm not the stock of silencing altars. I belong to the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So when I speak, understand where I'm coming from. Understand where I'm coming from. Do you not think I am one of those preachers on the street who have drunk the waters of Babylon and they vomited on people and instead of people getting born again, they get psychological safe, but they are still unsafe in spirit, marching to hell with their Bible. I don't belong to that stock. Number six, I don't belong to the kingdom of men. I belong to the kingdom of God. The influence of God over a territory, impacting it with his will and his plan until, until, until the will of God is done on earth as written in heaven. And seven, I'm not in ministry for attention. I'm not in ministry for money. Are you understanding me? We are here diffusing the knowledge of Christ among those who are perishing and among those who are being saved. So if you don't understand me, it's because you are not part of the kingdom of God. It's because Christ is not in your spirit. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. Our assignment in the crowd of the spirit is to talk to the sheep of Jesus Christ. Let them recognize the voice of the stranger so that the voice of 
let them recognize the voice of a stranger and, and separate it from the voice of Jesus so that they will be able to separate from the voice of strangers and begin to listen to the voice of Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching.